Welcome back to the Plone Conference 2021, day three. With me now is Thomas Shore, who's been a longtime Zope and Plone developer. Uh, great guy, very calm, but with a really good sense of humor. I mean, look at him. We're friends. Uh, he's got to have a good sense of humor. Uh, Thomas last year introduced to the world the Pyruvate Whiskey server, and he's here today to give us an update on what's happened since then. Please go ahead, Thomas. Um, thank you, Kim, for introducing me. And hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me here at Blown Conference. Um, at last year's Blown Conference, I presented uh, Pyruvate, a whiskey server which is implemented in Rust mostly and a little bit of Python. And I want to give you a project status update and also show some performance comparisons with uh, other Whiskey servers. Um, let me start with a short introduction to Whiskey and its use in SOAP and Plown. Um, Whiskey is the Python web server gateway interface um, and uh, is specified in Python enhancement proposal 3333. Uh, it's the standard interface between Python applications and a web server. Uh, and it's pretty old. It was created originally as Python Enhancement Proposal 333 in 2003. And then there was an update in 2010, mainly because of uh, Python 3. And as for SOAP Blown and Whiskey, we, we all remember the community efforts to migrate Blown to Python 3, uh, led by Philip Bauer a couple of years ago. And um, during that migration, uh, SOAP, 4, SOAP 4 was introduced and SOAP 4 replaced uh, C server, which was bundled pre previously with uh, SOAP 2 with uh, Whiskey. And uh, all that happened actually quite late uh, given the age of the whiskey pep. And during that migration, I contributed a bit to the whiskey setup of, of soap and blown. And I was also exploring working whiskey configurations with uh, existing servers. Um, and eventually, and out of curiosity, I decided to start, my, my, to start writing my own whiskey server. Um, also, because I wanted to learn Rust and thought it would make for an interesting project. And my goal, the goals I set up for myself was to write a multi-threaded server with uh, good performance that could be used with uh, soap and blown. Um, there, uh, another back, maybe some more background. Uh, the, since the SUDB is not thread safe, uh, it turned out that there is actually a very limited choice of whiskey servers that can be used with uh, soap. And the SOAP documentation actually recommends only two whiskey servers. The one is Waitress, which is the default, and it's shipping with Blown. And it's implemented in pure Python. It has a good overall performance. And the other one is Bjorn, which is a fast single threaded server written in C. And other popular whiskey servers uh, show poor performance with uh, SOAP. Um, why did I choose Rust for the implementation? Um, Rust is, a, is great for writing fast and secure code. And also it's becoming steadily more popular. It's been the most loved programming language in Stack Overflow's developer survey for five years in a row now. And also it's great for extending Python. Uh, and there, there are, there's a prominent example we all use and you might not be aware that it contains Rust code, and that is uh, the cryptography package available on Python package index. Um, there is a set of tools Rust, which uh, help you building Rust extensions uh, to Python. And there are a couple of uh, Rust in, uh, uh, C Python, Rust C Python interfaces. I'm using Rust C Python, but there is also um, Py03. And I think there is um, Rust CFFI also. Um, so what is Pyruvate from a user pers perspective? It's a package available from Py Python package index. So you, to use it, you would pip install Pyruvate. And then it's an importable module. 
uh, you import it, you have your whiskey application, and it's basically consists of one function that that's named serve. And you pass in the application as parameter and the socket you want to use and the number of worker threads, and that's it. Um, you have a running whiskey server. Um, to use it with uh, soap blown, um, there's still build out still around. Uh, every, um, I heard uh, Jens Klein's uh, talk yesterday, and uh, we are all going to move to pip install blown, but uh, as of yet, there's still a builder. And since uh, Pyruvate has a paste deploy entry point, um, you can use it with uh, build out as well. Uh, you can sp specify a, uh, a ini template in your um, blown recipes uh, uh, in your instance part. And uh, the template is pretty simple. You pa pass in the, the egg entry point, the number of the socket you want to use again, and the number of workers. Um, uh, quick rundown on the features. It's Pyruvate supports active Python versions. Currently, that means Python 3.6 through 3.10. Uh, I already mentioned it's got a Rust C Python based Python interface. I'm using MIO, Metal IO, which is a Rust crate that is part of a, a larger framework called Tokyo, uh, which is a async Rust framework uh, to implement the IO event loop. And then I'm having a worker pool. So I lay off, um, so I, I'm, I'm collecting the requests. Uh, I'm, I'm laying off the requests after accepting them to a, work, to a worker pool. And then there's a paste deploy entry point. Uh, Pyruvate integrates with Python logging. So it does quite some logging. Um, and it's doing uh, asynchronous logging, meaning there's a, a dedicated logging thread. Um, and so the Rust code that, that produces a, that creates a log message does not need to hold a global interpreter log. Um, <clears throat> um, you can use it with TCP or Unix domain sockets, and also it supports uh, systemd protocol socket activation. The current version on the Python package index is 1.1.1. Uh, uh, I've, I've changed uh, um, the development status to production stable in version 1.1.0. So the latest version only adds Python 3.10 support. Uh, it supports Linux on and Mac OS. It's hosted on GitLab. Um, I'm having quite a couple of tests now. The test coverage is at 89%, the reported test coverage on uh, and uh, there, but uh, it's important to know that there are Rust tests and Python tests, and only the Rust tests add, currently add to the reported test coverage. So the Python tests, which are implemented as Tox tests, uh, are uh, on top of that. Um, so the, the actual test coverage might be a, a, a little bit higher. Um, there is binary packages for Linux, so you don't need Rust to. Um, to use Pyruvate. Um, uh, it's many Linux 2010 wheels. And um, so, so it's important to have a to have recent PIP or and setup tools uh, versions to, to, to use it. Um, let's talk a bit about um, performance. Um, there is a there's a uh, pretty well-known uh, analysis of whiskey server performance uh, done by Omid Habib of App Dynamics um, that I used as a starting point for doing my own performance uh, benchmarks. Uh, and that that uh, benchmark was published in 2016, and some of you will know it. And uh, he compared six whiskey servers. Um, they were Björn, Cherry Pike, Unicorn, Mine Health, Mod Whiskey, and New Whiskey. Um, and uh, I, as I said, as I've used them as a starting point for my own test, test that I want to present today. And uh, so the benchmark, they, they carried out uh, by using a Docker container. So they isolated the Whiskey server 
in a Docker container and allocated two CPU cores to that container and 512 megabytes of RAM. And um, the testing was done with the benchmarking tool called Work, um, which you can find on GitHub. And the servers were tested in random order with an increasing number of simultaneous connections ranging from 100 to 10,000, which is quite a lot. And work was also limited uh, by using task sets to see two CPU cores that are not utilized, utilized by the Docker container. And uh, each test lasted 30 seconds and was repeated four times. And I, I, I thought that uh, setup was, was quite good and it, it, it suits what, what I wanted to do. And yeah, I'll, I like it a lot. And yeah, that's why I adapted it. Then the number of sustained requests, errors, and latencies were provi provided by work by the benchmarking tool. And Docker stats uh, provided the high CPU and memory watermarks. And um, they, the highest and lowest numbers uh, measured were discarded and the remaining values were averaged. That's the procedure they carried out in the original benchmark and I just kept it because yeah, you could do it differently, but, but yeah, I just wanted to stick with it. Um, what you can see here is the whiskey application they used for the benchmark. And as you can see, it, it simply returns okay as a list, as a, whisk, as a iterable. And uh, note the code that's uh, note the note the comment that's saying doesn't really do anything since we're benchmarking the service, not this code. And uh, we are going to discuss that in a bit. Um, so my changes to the original set setup was I swapped Mineheld and Mod Whiskey for Pyruvate and Waitress because I wanted to keep the servers that were reported for working with uh, SOAP and Float. And then I, I changed it to use Python 3 only because it was all, all, because it was still still using Python 2 in some cases, and I decreased the number of levels for the for the number of simultaneous connections. Um, also, the original benchmark uh, reported very disappointing results for the new whiskey configuration, so I thought I'd change that a bit, and I'm using only one process with two threads. Um, the Cherry Pie configuration did not work any longer because Cheroot, the whiskey server of Cherry Pie, is now packaged separately. So I had to change that a bit. And I swapped Docker for Portman because that's what I have on my uh, machine. And yeah, some, yeah, the original application simply returned OK as a string, but it should be bytes for Python 3. And I've put a fork on GitHub for those who are interested. Um, you can find it. Um, the server versions are the recent versions. So uh, I'm testing Waitress 2.0 for those who are interested, Bjorn 3.1.0. Um, and the Docker container is running on Debian 11. And Work was version 4.1.0, which is the last, last released versions. Uh, let's look at, at, at the benchmarks. So number of number of requests served and that there we see something that was already reported uh, from the original benchmark that Bjorn is really outracing all the other servers it's it's a lot faster it serves a lot more requests per second than any other server um, then after that we can see that there is yeah pyruvate is not doing bad it's got uh, a bit problems uh, at the start. So it, it's obviously, it's still better than Cheroot and Unicorn, but uh, when there is a low number of simultaneous connections, um, New Whiskey and Waitress are doing slightly better, that, but then it picks up and it can, can sustain a higher load. Um, let's look at the CPU usage. And um, we can see that, um, Bjorn is at exactly 100% because it's a single threaded server and the other servers are uh, can, can use a bit more CPU. Um, uh, and there's Cunicorn, which is uh, which at higher loads uh, cannot use uh, a, a CPU anymore and, and goes, goes, goes down, so CPU usage goes down. 
So using more CPU um, is actually not bad in this case because it's showing that uh, the multi-threaded servers can, can make use of more than one C uh, CPU core. So all the servers ex have multiple threads. Most of them are, have two threads except for Cunicorn, which follows the uh, Cunicorn documentation, uh, which, uh, in, which is five threads for two CPU cores. So it's their recommendation. But as you can see from the, the chart, it's may, maybe not, not a very good idea. Uh, memory usage is maybe is more or less okay for all servers, except maybe MuseG. This is also already reported in the original benchmark that it's got that it's consuming um, a lot of memory and maybe too much memory, and there's maybe an issue here. Um, and then there's errors to work, uh, reports socket errors. And we can see that with increasing load, all the servers start showing errors, except for Waitress and PyWooRed. They don't show any errors. And uh, NewWhisky is hidden here because NewWhisky will show errors for every single request. So there's this and, but, but it still serves those requests. So if you use a browser and open a NewWhisky request, then you will see the you will see the page or you will see the okay text. And that maybe points at an issue uh, of the benchmarking tool. That's at least an, an idea to explain that because it's not actually, the, 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 the tool reports errors for every request, but uh, um, uh, the browser doesn't show them and, uh, and um, reverse proxy won't show them either. So, as we have seen there, there, is, there are a number of whiskey servers that are not doing bad, like Waitress and uh, Pyruvate is also, um, uh, I'd say better than average. But the, the actual question that comes, comes out of this benchmark is why is Perrin so much faster? And of course it's a good, very good whiskey server implementation and it's got many optimizations and um, it's, it's implemented in C and C is always good for speed, but uh, then again, um, new whiskey is also implemented in C and C++. And uh, I have an, I, that question was already raised in the original benchmark and they suspect that there's something wrong there with the measurement or with the, with the setup. But I have an idea on that and that is that, um, the, the, that switching from a single threaded to multi-threaded server comes uh, with uh, benefits and costs and uh, shared access to resources actually adds to the complexity of the um, whiskey server uh, programming. And also, um, if we do, if we do, if, if you're offloading uh, web requests to a worker, to, to worker threads, that only makes a really sense when there is actually something to work on. And this is what both uh, Waitress and Pyruvate are doing. They are basically accepting, accepting requests. There's a listener and they, they, they accept requests and then they offload them to a worker pool. And uh, you, might, you might now remember that comment in the whiskey benchmarking application saying there's not, not really anything to do here. And uh, I, I think that, that uh, there's a point here that uh, the, the whiskey server uh, multi-threaded whiskey servers have additional complexity and, and uh, that shows in the benchmarking results. And uh, the, the application actually um, is, is better for a single threaded server. Um, but of course, um, if you have something to work on that, that might make sense to use, multi to, to use a worker pool and also there might be uh, shared use of ex expensive resources that you can realize with a worker pool like each database connection. But it has to be said that, that Python's global interpreter lock generally makes multi-threading a bit less effective. Um, so um, let's look, so with that in mind, let's look at a more realistic scenario and let's start benchmarking alone. So uh, starting with that benchmark, I created a Docker image for Blown 525 containing three Blown instances with uh, Puron, Pyruvate, and Waitress respectively. And I have modified the benchmarking script 
So I have, yeah, well, in the Docker file, I have increased, uh, yeah, no, that's in the benchmarking script. I have increased the memory to one gigabyte. So there's a bit more memory because I thought clone might maybe need more, a bit more. And I'm also benchmarking different URLs, not only one URL, and we'll see that in a bit. And I'm doing some cache warming before the actual measurement because um, clone and soap are using caches on several levels. And I thought it's it's maybe a good idea to, to warm them up. It's all in the fork on GitHub. So if you're interested, you can check that out. And then I've prepared a SUDB with a blown site and the URLs that I want to benchmark. And uh, I'm mounting that into the container. And um, I'm using, I'm, I'm benchmarking Plone 525, but I've pinned Waitress to version 2.0 because Plone 525 still ships with 144, but I wanted the latest Waitress version. And it's compatible, of course, with, with the latest Plone. Um, so, once again, if you look at the, the request serve for slash URL, then we can see that um, Bjorn is still the fastest, but, but there's, there's, the difference is not really that big anymore. And then follow, it's followed by Pyruvate and Waitress comes with a bit more of a distance. So um, yes, so we can see that, that the difference is much, much smaller now. So there is obviously an impact of uh, the, the complexity that is added by the application by Plone. If we, if we uh, benchmark the blown URL, then it's becoming even less of a difference. So you can see that they're, they're both, that they're all three servers uh, are approximately the same. It, it, it's uh, with uh, increased workload, Bjorn even starts getting worse, but um, we have to look at the errors for rendering blown. We can see that with increasing load, there's a lot of socket errors reported now by the benchmarking tool. And Bjorn starts out a bit earlier than the two other servers, but uh, the message here is really that you can't, you can't have that many simultaneous connections uh, to request a blown URL. If you look at the CPU usage, then um, we can see that all of them are using 100% of CPU because in this first setup, I have uh, used one worker for each server. So we see that all, all three, all th yeah, well, we see what we expect basically. So one worker then is 100% of CPU. Um, I've also benchmarked blown as JSON. So I'm sending accept application JSON as a header and which might be important for use with uh, Blown 6 because uh, we are bypassing Diaso in this case, at least. Um, and, uh, but we basically see the same result. We see that uh, there's Pjörn and Py followed by Peruvate and then comes Waitress last. Um, the most interesting benchmark is when trying to download load a blob. So if to the database, I've uploaded a blob from the uh, in into the blob storage uh, with uh, 5.2 megabytes of size. And here we can see that Pyruvate and Pjörn are really a lot doing a lot better than Waitress when it comes to serving that blob. Um, now, uh, in the next setup, I have increased the number of threads for Pyruvate and Waitress, so where possible. And we can see now that Pyruvate is, is already uh, better than Bjorn in serving, uh, in serving requests, whereas Waitress starts out better, but with increasing load, uh, quickly, quickly uh, it cannot keep, keep, keep up. Um, we can also see that the CPU usage is now actually differing a bit. So Bjorn is, of course, still at 100%, and Pyruvate and Waitress can, to a certain degree, make use of the additional um, CPU. Um, but it's not much, actually. And I decided to go a bit further and uh, have not only two CPU cores for the next benchmark, but um, four CPUs and keep the, the threading set up for Pyruvate and Waitress at two threads. 
And now we can see that actually both pyruvate and waitress can serve more requests per second than Pjörn um, throughout, even with the increasing load. And yeah, there's um, so, some, some conclusions I have on that. So um, Bjorn is still the clear winner when using a single worker for all URLs, except Blown. And since Blown is a bit more of a complex page and, there is, and, and then there is no real difference in the number of requests served. And Bjorn may be even showing errors a bit earlier than the two other servers. And adding one thread and sufficient resources lets both Pyruvate and Waitress perform better than Bjorn. So it looks here as if there is really a benefit, benefit of having a worker pool and of having a multi-threaded server. Uh, another conclusion is that all configurations fail to sustain higher loads for blown. So uh, you cannot have you cannot uh, request more than fifty simultaneous connections. Um, and a result that I think is pretty important is that Bjorn and Pyruvate are serving blobs a lot faster than waitress. So there's there, there's a real difference here. And also I. I, I'd say that Pyruvate can challenge waitress in all scenarios. And when adding worker threads, Pyruvate seems to make uh, a better use of the added resources than waitress does. Um, I'm coming, uh, coming to the end and I, I, want to, I want to present a chart to, to answer a question that probably um, some of you might have the, which is, does it really make a def difference? Is it, is it worth um, uh, switching the whiskey server? And we have been using uh, Peruvate in production now for a couple of months on uh, different sites, uh, plain soap sites, uh, clone sites. There's also a pyramid uh, site. And I, what I did here is I um, made some sort of A-B test using a C, uh, two CO clients, one uh, running, one using Peruvate and one using Waitress. They're both on the same virtual machine. And in front of them is an Apache web server. We, we use Apache in this case because we have to do some authentication and it, it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's policy to use Apache for that. And um, this Apache web server is doing fair balancing be between those two CO clients uh, both use uh, two worker threads and um, as you can see this is a very low traffic site but still um, there's a clear difference in the number of requests that gets directed to pyruvate uh, compared to those direct to waitress so um, what you can see here is that uh, the that that continuously pyruvate gets gets assigned more requests by the by the Apache by the Apache uh, reverse proxy in front of it, and uh, actually the number of requests is are served is uh, lands to forty seven percent on on waitress and fifty three percent are served by pyruvate, um, and that. Uh, difference would also be significant if you would, for example, do a t-test for paired samples, then it would be highly significant. And yes. And with that, I want to, uh, I'm, I'm coming to the end. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And yes, consider using pyruvate. I think it's pretty easy to replace weight with, with by weight and maybe it suits your setup and your configuration. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. That's brilliant. I had uh, very little insight into Whiskey servers. I just knew we had to have one. <laughs> and so it's great to see all the detailed work that you've put into this and in creating Pyruvate and uh, continuing to work on it and improve it. And um, I, I am curious to know how soon we're gonna get this as the default whiskey server for Plone. But uh, thank you very much again, Tomas Shore. Uh, everyone, please join us. Please join Tomas in the Jitsi. I'll be posting the link in the Slack or you can find it right under in your LoudSwarm window. 
And uh, thank you again. Let's talk over in the Jitsi.